The Kraft Foods Company presents Harold Perry as the Great Gildersleeve. Hey, Uncle, who'd you vote for? Leroy. Great Gildersleeve is brought to you by the Kraft Foods Company, makers of Parquet Margarine. Millions of women all over America serve Parquet because it tastes so good. Why, Parquet tastes like it should cost twice as much. To market, to market, to get some Parquet. Home again, home again, try it today. You'll like it, you'll love it, like millions who say their favorite margarine. P-A-R-K-A-Y, Parquet Margarine, made by Kraft. A week ago, something very important happened in the life of the great Gildersleeve. He became engaged to his charming next-door neighbor, Miss Adeline Fairchild. Let's go back to the morning after Adeline shyly accepted his proposal. The happy bridegroom-to-be is just arising from his couch. Engaged? See? Well, I did it for the baby's sake. I can't adopt her unless I get married. Didn't have to rush into it, though. Suppose the parents come back and take the baby away. There I'd be, married for life. That's a long time. (laughs) Say... Nobody knows about it yet. We could keep our engagement secret a while. Then if the parents should come back... (laughs) You're sly, Gildersleeve. Where's my other shoe? Why, Throckmorton. Good morning, Adeline. My, you certainly came over early, lover boy. Yeah, lover boy. (laughs) Just couldn't wait to see your little bride-to-be, could you? Uh, no, I couldn't. (laughs) You're sweet. Well, uh, bride-to-be, I mean, Adeline, I've been thinking. So have I. Why, I lay awake all last night making plans for our marriage. Oh? I can just see our cute little towels hanging on the rack together. He and she. He and (laughs) she. Why, Throckmorton, what's the matter? You look pale. Pale? Oh, nothing. I just haven't had my orange juice yet. Oh, well, I've just been busy as a bee making plans. First, we'll have our engagement party. Engagement party? Mm-hmm. Hey, wait a minute. Do we have to have one of those? Why, of course, silly. That's where we're going to tell the whole wide world the good news. Uh, Adeline. Oh, promise me that someday you and I... Adeline? Yes? I just got a wonderful idea. What's that? How about keeping our engagement a secret? What? Well, just for a little while. Throckmorton P. Gildersleeve, you're not trying to get out of this, are you? Get out of it? No. (laughs) Just thought it'd be nice to keep it a secret, that's all. You haven't told anybody, have you? Well, I sent just one little telegram to a relative down south. Oh? Oh, well. I don't think we should tell anybody else. I don't see why not. Well, it's more romantic that way. Romantic? What do you mean? Well, to me, a secret like this is too precious to share. But if you want to tell every Tom, Dick, and Harry, go ahead. Oh, Throckmorton, you little darling. I didn't realize that such a romantic heart beats underneath that gray business suit. I do believe you're right. After all, Romeo and Juliet kept their love a secret. Yeah, that's right. Why, they kept their secret till the very end. Then they both committed suicide. <laughs> well, we wouldn't have to go quite that far. <laughs> well, I better be going, Adeline. Don't forget, it's a secret. I won't. Goodbye, Romeo. Uh, oh, promise me that someday you and I. I wish you wouldn't sing that so loud. <laughs> Yes, Leroy. Sit down, Unky. You're late for breakfast. All right, Marjorie. Where you been? Been? Oh, well, just thought I'd take an early morning walk, work up an appetite. Uh-huh. <laughs> What's the matter with you, young man? Nothing, Uncle Romeo. Huh? 
Yes. Congratulations, Uncle Morris. What? I understand you and Miss Fairchild became engaged last night. Who told you? Miss Fairchild, she just phoned. E God, she certainly kept it a secret. Couldn't even wait till I got home. Well, she said you wouldn't mind if she just told the family. Well... Uncle Mort, I think it's the best thing that ever happened. Miss Fairchild's awfully sweet. She'll make a wonderful wife, and now the baby will have a mother. Oh, well, yes. But for the time being, I've asked Miss Fairchild to keep our engagement a secret. What's the matter, Uncle? Getting cold feet? <laughs> Let's show a little respect, Leroy. Now, thank you not to jump to conclusions. We're keeping this to ourselves for romantic reasons. <laughs> Leroy! <laughs> You understand? We just won't let it go beyond this room. Sure. All right. Oh, Mr. Gilsey. Uh, good morning, Bertie. Well, I guess you're pretty happy this morning, Miss Gilsey. Huh? Mm-hmm. I think it's wonderful. What's wonderful? You and Miss Fairchild get engaged. Oh. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Bertie, did Adeline tell you, too? Yes, sir. She told me just now over the back fence. Oh. Why didn't she broadcast it over the radio? Oh, she told me not to tell anybody. She said it was a secret. Some secret. Isn't it thrilling, Bertie? It sure is. A nice man like you should be married, Miss Gilsey. Well, thank you, Bertie. But this is a secret. So we're not going to talk about it, are we? No, sir. Bertie won't talk about it. Good. But I know you're going to be mighty happy. Miss Fairchild's going to make a wonderful wife. Now, Bertie, we said we would... Yes, sir. Bertie won't talk about it. Good. Now that's settled. Just think. Pretty soon you'll be mad for life. Bertie? Bertie won't talk about it. Yes. <laughs> All right. Yes, sir, Mr. Gillespie, you ran a good race, but the party finally caught up with you. <laughs> Bertie? But don't worry, Bertie won't talk about it. Ooh, I don't want any breakfast. <laughs> Why did Adeline have to tell the family about this? Oh, well. As long as it doesn't go any further, I guess it'll be all right. Got a lot of work to do today. I'll just bury myself in the water report. Morning, Bessie. Oh, good morning, Mr. Gildersleeve. And congratulations. What? Oh, I didn't know you and Miss Fairchild would be very happy. Bessie, did she tell you too? Well, she said she didn't think you'd mind, since I was your secretary. No, of course not. I don't mind. We might as well tell everybody. Send out a notice to all our subscribers. Oh, yes, sir. I'll send them out right away. No, you won't. Well, I don't mind the extra work. Forget it, Bessie. This is supposed to be a secret. Oh. Well, let's don't tell a soul. We'll just keep it between you and me and the lamppost. Lamppost? <laughs> it's a figure of speech, Bessie. Now, let's forget all about this and get down to work. I'll get it. Summerfield Water Department. Commissioner Gildersleeve speaking. Well, this is the police department. Chief Gates speaking. Oh? Hello, Chief. What do you want? I'm very happy for you, Commissioner. <laughs> what are you talking about? Come on now, you know. Oh, promise me that someday you and I... Chief! <laughs> Adeline told you to? Well... Well, she said, since I'm one of your closest friends... Oh, sure. And take it from me, Commissioner, you'll never regret this. Now, look. Marriage is a great institution. Yes, yes. But who wants to live in an institution? <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Uh, very funny. Only kidding, Commissioner. Take it from an old married man. Marriage is okay. It's a give-and-take proposition. You give and your wife takes. Oh, <laughs> oh, 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 oh. Chief, if you'll just stop those corny jokes. Mr. Gildersleeve, sincerely, I want to wish you both the best of luck. Well, thanks. And, Commissioner... Yeah? May all your troubles be little ones. Oh, oh, oh. oh for goodbye. <coughs> for heaven's sakes. What's the matter, Mr. Gildersleeve? Does Chief Gates know the secret, too? Secret? Adeline hasn't told many people. Only Leroy, Marjorie, Bertie, Chief Gates, and you. I wonder who else knows about it. Hello, Gilder. Hello, Judge. <laughs> oh, promise me that someday you and I... <laughs> oh, another one. And may I be the first to congratulate you? The first? 
Get in line. You're about the tent. Well, Adeline said it would be all right to tell me since I'm your lawyer. Oh, sure. The more, the merrier. Well, Gildy, Dan Cupid finally hit you with one of his little arrows. Of course, I don't see how he could miss you make such a big target. <laughs> I'm just going to ignore that, you old goat. And Gildy, Miss Fairchild said I'd be invited to an engagement party before long. Oh, she did. Well, I told her that we were going to wait a while. Well, you have to learn, Gildy, that a woman usually has the last word. Well, Adeline's had her last word. Where's my hat? Adeline, I'd like to talk to you. You know, Throckmorton, I've had the busiest morning. Yes, I know that. <laughs> Adeline? Yes? I thought we agreed this morning to keep our engagement a secret. Why, of course we did, silly. Well, a lot of people seem to know about it. And the little bird didn't tell them. <laughs> What's the matter? You're so cute when you're gruff, woof, woof. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Adeline. All right, you masterful man, you. I won't tell another soul. Good. And that's settled. We'll just keep it a secret. Yes. Until our engagement party. Yeah. Huh? Adeline, I thought we were going to postpone our engagement party. Postpone it? Well, just a year. I mean, a month or two. Well, all right. <sighs> Throckmorton. Yeah? Guess who sent us congratulations on our engagement? Who? Cousin Leela. Leela? Yes, your old sweetheart. She answered my wire this morning. Oh. She says she hopes we'll both be very happy. Of course, she doesn't mean it. I bet she's tearing out her blonde hair. By its black roots. Aren't <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, little mink? Leela and I were just good friends. Now, Throckmorton, she said to tell you she'll never forget those moonlit nights by the reservoir. Oh? She did? <laughs> Throckmorton? Huh? What are you blushing about? Uh, am I blushing? You haven't forgotten her, have you? I have, too. No, you haven't. You're still in love with her. Adeline. I see it all now. That's why you want to keep our engagement a secret, you blue beard. <laughs> oh, my, please. <laughs> you never want to have our engagement party. <laughs> yes, I do, Adeline. We'll have the party real soon. <laughs> we'll have it... We'll have it any time you say. Oh, that's wonderful. How about my night? Um, <laughs> uh, I don't think we could, Adeline. We don't have the invitations printed. Oh, I ordered the invitations this morning. You did? Uh-huh. I've taken care of everything. You certainly have. Oh, Throckmorton, I'm so happy, aren't you? Oh, yes. Oh, promise me that someday you and I... <laughs> Big prizes, 20 beautiful Ford sedans ready for delivery. Did you hear that? $50,000 in prizes, including 20 sleek 1949 four-door Ford sedans, are being awarded in Parquet series of contests. And in addition to his Ford, the grand prize winner gets $1,000 in cash. Listen to this. Each week for two more weeks, Parquet is awarding four beautiful new Ford sedans. 40 General Electric Table Radios, 20 Corey Coffee Makers, 20 Toastmaster Automatic Pop-Up Toasters, 60 new $10 bills. Now, as you know, the great Gildersleeve found a little baby girl a few weeks ago. All you do to enter this contest is suggest a name for that baby. Write the suggested name on a contest entry blank. They're available at your food dealers with complete rules. Or use a plain piece of paper. Send entry, your name and address, and one red flap from the end of a package of Parquet Margarine to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois. Be sure to enclose your Parquet dealer's name and address. Friends, go after the car that everybody wants, the beautiful 1949 Ford sedan. Hurry, though. This Saturday is the closing date in this fourth week's contest. Mail your entry to Parquet Margarine, Box 736, Chicago 77, Illinois, now. Names of earlier winners will be announced in a few minutes. Well, now let's rejoin the great Gildersleeve. 
The fatal day of the engagement party has arrived, and the condemned man did not eat a hearty breakfast. It's afternoon now, and we find our prisoner of love in solitary confinement up in his room. <sighs> Trapped by a woman's tears. It'll be all over tonight. <laughs> well, maybe it's all for the best. We'll be able to adopt the baby now. Adeline's really a fine woman. At least I won't have to buy an engagement ring. I'll use the one I got for Leela. <laughs> Good thing she gave it back. Leela. What a girl. <laughs> well, it's all over now. I'll just forget about her. Now, where did I put that ring? I guess it's in this cigar box with Leela's letters. Let's see here. Leela's letters are getting a little faded, just like our romance. Look at this old dance program. That's the night we went to the Halloween dance at the Elks Hall. I remember Leela and I had the last waltz together. That was a wonderful night. I'll never forget our costumes. Leela went as Madame Pompadour and I went as Henry VIII. I remember I carried a chicken leg around all night. <laughs> we danced cheek to cheek. And her hair tickled my nose. What's the matter with me? I gotta forget, Leela. Now, where's that ring? What's this? Uh, that old blue ribbon I won at the 4th of July picnic. What's it say? Second prize, fat man's race. <laughs> Leela and I had a wonderful time at that picnic. I remember after lunch, we took a walk down by the brook. We sat there on the bank and watched our reflections in the water. And I stole a little kiss, and she made me put it right back. <laughs> and then we... Gildersleeve, you've got to stop this. Remember, you're getting engaged to Adeline tonight. You're supposed to be looking for a ring. Leela doesn't mean a thing to me anymore. It doesn't affect me one way or the other. So, whoop. What's this? Picture of Leela in a bathing suit. <laughs> Gee, she looks cute. I think I'll look for the ring later. <laughs> <laughs> Congratulations from Peavy's Pharmacy. Huh? On your coming marriage, Mr. Gildersleeve. Oh, thanks, Peavy. I suppose this is a happy day for you. Happy? Oh, yes. Now, Mrs. Peavy and I are looking forward to the engagement party at Miss Fairchild's tonight. And we'll be there with Bell Oh, that's fine. You know, Mr. Gildersleeve, I'll never forget the wonderful parties we had at that house when Leela Ransom used to live there. Leela? Yes, you remember the night... Peavy, that happened a long time ago. I've forgotten all about Leela. You have? I can't understand that. She used to live right next door to you. <laughs> Peavy, I... You must remember Mrs. Ransom. She was an attractive widow, about five feet two, freckles on her nose. I know. I remember her, Peavy. Oh, I thought you said you forgot her. Yes. <laughs> Let's skip it. All right. I thought it was funny you'd forget her. You were quite fond of her at one time. Yes, Peavy, but that's all over. Mm, of course. Yeah. She certainly made an impression on me. I'll never forget that birthday party at her house. We played post office. <laughs> and I delivered a letter to Mrs. Ransom in the pantry. <laughs> I certainly was a happy postman. <laughs> Peavy, let's get one thing straight. Leela is a thing of the past. Just a memory. She's gone with the wind. She is? Yes, of course. Now, put yourself in my shoes, Peavy. Suppose you were getting engaged to Mrs. Peavy tonight. You'd forget all about a girl like Leela, wouldn't you? Well, I wouldn't say that. Uh, <laughs> goodbye. <laughs>
Well, if it ain't the commish. Hello, Floyd. Well, I got an invite to your funeral. Yeah. I mean, engagement party. <laughs> yeah, we can dispense with the barbershop humor, Floyd. Just give me a haircut. Sure. Hop right up in the chair, and I'll spruce you all up for tonight. All right. Uh, uh, uh. Oh, promise me that someday you and I... Floyd, don't sing that. Okay. Give me the willies. Uh-huh. Say, Kamish, tell me something. Whatever happened to Leela Ransom? Leela? <laughs> now, why should I know? I'd forgotten all about her. Uh-huh. You used to have quite a pash for that southern belle. Floyd, that's ancient history. A thing of the past. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Well, you're right, Commish. When a man gets engaged, he's got to forget all about other women. That's correct. So I'm glad to see you putting Leela out of your mind. Well, I am. That's good. She don't bother you at all no more, huh? That's right. But, uh, Commish, Leela sure did look cute in a bathing suit, didn't she? She sure did. <laughs> Goodbye, Floyd. I don't need a haircut. <laughs> doing over here in the corner? Uh, nothing, Judge. Come on, join the party. I'll join the party in a minute. Say, Gildy, it's almost 10 o'clock. When are you going to announce your engagement? Pretty soon, Horace. Go finish your strawberry ice cream. All right. We're all waiting. We're all waiting. Why doesn't he mind his own business, the old goat? Everybody is so anxious to push me into this thing. Adeline's been breathing down my neck all night. Why doesn't she... Hello, Throckmorton. Oh, hello, Adeline. Throckmorton, Cupid Pie. Uh, yes? Don't you think it's about time we announced our engagement? The party's practically over. Well... The ice cream's almost gone. I could run out and get some more. Well, Throckmorton, if I didn't know you'd better, I'd think you were trying to back out of this. Back out? <laughs> well, come on now. Let's tell our little secret to the world. Uh, excuse me, Miss Fairchild. The Jolly Boys would like to sing a song in honor of the occasion. How about it, Commissioner? Of course, Chief. Let's go. Oh, but, Throckmorton, what about our announcement? Uh, uh, later, Adeline, after the song. <laughs> Hurry up, Chief. Well, here's the commission. Hello, Mr. Gildersleeve. Gildy, we're going to do a song that's dedicated to you. Oh, thanks. What is it? Wedding bells are breaking up that old gang of mine. <laughs> <laughs> that's not very funny. I'll see you later. Folks. No, Commissioner, don't go away. We need your bathtub baritone. Well, all right, Chief. You couldn't do without me anyway. Okay, Troubadours, here we go. Not a soul down on the corner. That's a pretty certain sign That wedding bells are breaking up That old gang of mine All the boys are singing love songs They forgot sweet Adeline Wish I could Those wedding bells are breaking up That old gang of mine there goes Jack, there goes Jim, down through Lover's Lane. Now and then we meet again, but they don't seem the same. He'll miss you. Gee, I get a lonesome feeling when I hear those church bells chime. Those wedding bells are breaking up that old gang of mine. Thank you, Miss Fairchild. Oh, Throckmorton. Yes? Shall we make the announcement now? Announcement? Well, in just a minute. What? I have to get the ring, Adeline. Oh. It's in my overcoat hanging in the hall. I'll be right back. You hurry now. <laughs> yeah, hurry now. Uh, this is it. Can't stall any longer, Gildersleeve. Farewell, Leela. Guess I'll never see you again. 
Uh, see the rings in one of these pockets here. Maybe I lost it. <laughs> no, no such luck. Here it is. Uh, guess I'll have to go in and face the music. I could just walk out the front door here, run away. Oh, I'd have to come back someday, get a clean shirt. Uh, here. Huh. There's a taxi out in front. Somebody's getting out of it. A woman. She's coming in. That walk looks familiar. I wonder if... No, it couldn't be. Yes, it is. It's Leela. Martin. Oh, Madeline. Chuck Morton, you're turning green. What's the matter? Uh, oh, nothing. I'm fine. <laughs> well, I wonder who's at the door. It's... It's... <laughs> Chuck Morton. Why, I declare he's fainted. Chuck Morton, speak to me. <laughs> Here they are, the names of the top winners in the second week of Parquet's $50,000 baby naming contest. Here are the entrants who have won 1949 four-door Ford sedans. Nancy McAnally of Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Mrs. H.D. Lashier of Box 107, College Station, Berrien Springs, Michigan. Mrs. S. Lewis Johnson, Jr. of Dallas, Texas. Mrs. Cecil R. Bolner of Frankfort, Kentucky. Accept our congratulations. Winners of 140 other prizes in the second week's contest will be notified by mail. Remember, $50,000 in prizes in all are being awarded, but next week's contest is the last. So send in several entries, maybe four or five, to boost your opportunities to win the 1949 Ford sedan. Above all, friends, hurry! <laughs> Morton, darling. Uh, huh? Oh, uh, Adeline, what happened? You fainted, Throckmorton. I did? They carried you out here on the front porch to get some fresh air. Oh, better stand up. Clear my head. Let Adeline help. Uh, here we are. There. Uh, you feel better? Yeah. Adeline, did Leela really come? Yes, she's upstairs. Oh, I'm sorry we didn't get to announce our engagement tonight. But we did. Huh? They couldn't revive you in time, so I made the announcement. <laughs> you did? Yes, we're engaged, lover boy. We are. Mm. <laughs> oh, well, I declare, he's faded again. <laughs> The Great Gildersleeve is played by Harold Perry. Adeline Fairchild by Miss Una Merkel. The show was written by Gene Stone and Jack Robinson with music by Jack Neeson. Included in the cast are Walter Tetley, Mary Lee Robb, Lillian Randolph, Earl Ross, and Richard Legrand. This is John Wall saying goodnight for the Kraft Foods Company, makers of the famous line of Kraft quality food products. Be sure to listen in next Wednesday and every Wednesday for the further adventures of The Great Gildersleeve. Good night. Here's grand news for lovers of natural cheese. Now, after waiting many months, Kraft has plenty of aged American for you. Since before the war, the demand for natural American cheese has been so great that it's been very difficult to set aside enough for aging. But now, Kraft has it. So if you've had a hankering for natural American cheese with the grand flavor that comes from aging, let your dealer know. Tell him you want aged American, the Kraft kind. Take home a big wedge cut from a golden wheel. Ah, there's a lot of eating enjoyment in a wedge of American cheese, especially if it's aged American by Kraft. This is NBC, the national broadcast.